The Fourier transforms are mind-blowing, especially when you understand the math behind them. And what I have over here is a bunch of boxes that are resembling different components of the Fourier transform. I have the integral over here, I have the function f of t in time, and I have this correlator, which I'm going to explain, it's kind of like a radar. And once you understand this idea, you'll understand the math behind the Fourier transform and you won't be able to see it the same ever again, because it's finally going to make sense. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is explain to you what is the Fourier transform, how it works, and I'm going to lay out the math behind it in a way that's just going to be very intuitive and mind-blowing. And by the end of this video, you're going to understand why they're solved the way they're solved and why they're represented visually, graphically, the way they are usually uh, represented graphically. So we're going to go ahead and solve the math first, then we're going to plot them and graph them, and we're going to see what that actually looks like. So if I were to start with a very simple Fourier transform, and in this case, you've seen many Fourier transforms represented in the case of signals like sinusoids, like basically something like as simple as um, f of t is equals to cosine of 5t. Okay, suppose I want to take the Fourier transform of this guy. What do I do? Well, I know that the Fourier transform is basically taking the integral of this function f of t and multiplying it by e to the minus j omega t. Okay, and this is all integrated with respect to time. So how do you actually solve a Fourier transform like this? And why is a Fourier transform taking this uh, uh, cosine of 5t, which just basically looks like a sinusoid, and how come, this is usually how it looks like in time, and how come it takes that, and just by applying the Fourier transform, you're basically ending up with a uh, frequency spectrum signal, one that's around five, one that's around minus five. Oh, you cannot see that part over here. If you're taking signals and systems, you understand that basically once you take the Fourier transform of a signal that's sinusoidal, you just end up with its frequency components, one on the positive side, one on the negative side. Well, how and why does that actually happen? So again, let's kind of break it down in first principles. Let's take it step by step. But before I go ahead and I explain to you the math behind it, I want you to conceptually understand what the Fourier transform is doing. That's why we broke it down in multiple components. So we have this integral here. We have this cosine 5t, or this f t. And then we have the e to the minus uh, j omega t, okay? And then this dt just relates to the integral. So, so this is part of this integral over here. This is basically saying we're integrating with respect to time. So these guys are, let's call them component number three. This cosine is component number one. And then this e to the j omega t is component number two, okay? So every single Fourier transform has three components. And I want you to think of this number one as the actual signal that's traveling in space. This could be me talking right now, it could be light, it could be audio, it could be anything, any type of signal that we're trying to take in the time domain and bring it, bring it down to the frequency domain. How do we bring it down to the frequency domain? Well, think of this e to the minus j omega t as what we call like the detector or the correlator or the radar. I'll give you a simple example. Suppose you have a, uh, a bird or a plane that's like flying, like over here, okay? It's just a plane flying. And there's a little watchtower over here that's like sending out radar signals everywhere. And the moment it detects that there's a plane, the, the signals are sent back and there is a detection that, oh, there's a plane. Think of the plane, this is basically how airports operate. You, you see these things that are like antennas that are like turning around all over and they're trying to detect objects. And the moment they detect them, they basically send signals. The moment that signal collides with them, they're like, oh, there's a plane over here. So this is the exact same thing that's happening over here. We're just like the plane. Think of this sinusoid as a little plane, like flying in the air or some signal that's flying in the air. That's kind of like the voice that I'm talking about. It's flying in the air. And then think of, of this e to the minus j omega t as a radar, as something that's like sending out signals everywhere to try to detect it. And the moment these guys collide in the same frequency, or in this case, like in the same space, that's when you realize, oh, we have detected a signal. And then as a result, you plot that signal. So now mathematically, what does that actually look like? So let's, let's go ahead and solve this Fourier transform. And Fourier transforms are generally like perceived as something that's complicated, but not really. They are pretty easy. So let's just go ahead and prove that. So again, we have cosine 5t e to the minus j omega t dt. Now we know that this cosine is written in the cosine form. This is an e written in, in the e form. We want to bring this to the same format as this guy so we can do the math in a way that's much simpler. So we're just going to convert it using Euler's equation. And we know that for Euler's equation, cosine of 5t is going to equal 1 over half e to the j 5t minus um, also 1 half 
e to the, or this should be a plus e to the minus five j t or j minus j five t. If this was a sine, it would be over two j, and this would be a minus over here. That's what the identity looks like. So I just go ahead and rewrite that. So we're going to write this cosine again as e to the j five t plus e to the minus j five t. This entire thing is multiplied by one half. Okay, and then we're still going to multiply it by e to the minus j omega t. This entire thing is dt, still to be integrated over positive infinity, negative infinity. Then we can start using the distributive property. We can distribute uh, and, and combine these things over here. So if we combine this element with this element, we know that when we multiply exponents, we just add up the exponents. So it's just going to simply be e to the um, j5t minus j omega t plus e to the minus j5t minus j omega t, okay? So now we end up with two terms, and this entire thing, again, is gonna be dt integrated over here, okay? I hope you can see that. I may, I may, I may draw lines in between them, just so you can see very clearly. This is one step, this is one step over here. Now we have another step underneath, which is we can simplify things further before we solve for the integral, which is we can factor out a jt, and we end up with a five minus omega, and then likewise, we can do the same over there. So we have this five j five minus omega t, and then um, plus e to the minus, then we can do the same, then we can, we can take out a minus over here, and then that ends up being a j five plus omega t, and again, this entire thing is one half, Okay, so now what we've ended up doing is we isolated two different five minus omega and five plus omega components. Then we can go ahead and actually solve for the integral. And here's where it gets really, really cool. If you go ahead and take the integral, so you might, you might already be familiar with this, but if you take the integral from minus infinity to positive infinity of let's say e, e to the j alpha t, let's just say that there's some type of variable called alpha, well, that simply just ends up giving us like um, two pi um, the the delta function of alpha, and what that simply means is that this delta function is like an infinitely like long spike, and that's usually what we see when we plot the Fourier transform. We see in the graph that the frequency that's going sinusoidal suddenly becomes a spike. It becomes it becomes like a, a little little line. Now, the crazy part is that if you were to, instead of doing the minus infinity to the to plus infinity, if you just assume some type of period t, or, 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 or like let's say from minus t to t, or from like t over two to t, then we can just go ahead and solve the integral. And then we know that the integral, if you haven't taken integration, all the integral is really doing is just doing a summation of all the little parts of that equation. Uh, in, in, in the case of taking an integral of e to the something, uh, the, the integral is just the, the same e to the something over the something. So it ends up being e to the j um, alpha t over j alpha, for example. And basically, if you take that and start plotting in t and minus t, kind of like the way you do for an integral, you notice that you end up with basically the, uh, the, the, the same equation that we have over here, which is e to the t and e to the minus t. So you end up with like e to the j alpha t or j alpha minus e to the minus j alpha t over j alpha. Now, if you factor out this j from over here and the half, then you end up with the sine function. If you remember the sine from Euler's identity, I'm going to erase this. So sine of t can basically be re rewritten as e to the j um, t minus, uh, so it's one, one over two j, one over two j e to the minus j t. So basically, if we take that exact same thing, then we see that if we take that same integral from infin positive infinity negative infinity, we get the delta function. But if we take it over a smaller period, then we just end up with sine of stuff over stuff, which is just a sink function. So basically solving this integral gives us a sink function, sink of let's say, I don't know, like some, some, some type of function, 
right? Obviously with some, with some constants. Now the reason this is relevant is because this explains why if you're taking the Fourier transform over an infinite period of time, and again, we're gonna connect the math now to the visuals. So if you were to go and solve a Fourier transform, and again, you take it like again, cosine of 5t, that basically is in time represented like this with the frequency of five, whatever, this is amplitude, this is time. We take the Fourier transform, and then we suddenly notice that this gets plotted as at frequency five and frequency minus five. If you were to take the integral from minus infinity to positive infinity, then you're gonna get the delta function. You're gonna get these spike lines, these kind of infinitely long spike lines, right? But if you were to, instead of doing it over the minus infinity, positive infinity, do it over a smaller period of t, let's actually do this. So let's do it in different colors. So if you do it from positive infinity to minus infinity, then you see that we do it over these lines over here. If we do it from like something like, let's say, from minus t to plus t, then what we're gonna notice is instead of these infinitely long spikes, we're gonna have a sync function that looks like this on both sides. Okay, and then if we keep increasing the bounds, like let's say instead of from minus 5t, let's do from like minus 100t to like plus 100t, then what we're doing over here is just we're basically making the, the, the um, sink even narrower. And what you can see is that as we keep increasing and increasing and increasing the bounds, we're increasing the resolution of, a, of our scanner. So going back to the very first analogy of the little bird or like plane that's like flying and the little watchtower like detecting it, sending signals. Again, you can redraw the Fourier transform or rewrite it and really just think of it as, so you have the f of t, which is the signal you're trying to detect. And then you have your e to the minus j omega t as your little radar. And then you have this integral, the time integral, as the resolution and the accuracy at which you're able to detect that plane or bird. So if you have infinite, infinite resolution, basically from minus infinity to plus infinity, you're gonna get this green exact line where I can tell you exactly with certainty that the frequency is minus five and plus five. Now, if I were to go over like a much smaller period, like in this case, just like one period from minus t to minus t, then I reduce the resolution of my radar. I'm not able to detect things quite as, as accurately. And I end up with a sync function that's like a little bit wide. And then as I keep, an, as I keep increasing my, 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 my bounds of the integral, and as I keep approaching positive infinity and negative infinity, then I am a lot more likely to approach that limit of having the exact accuracy. So again, there's only three components to the Fourier transform. The signal you're trying to detect, the correlator or radar or the detector, and then the resolution, which is defined by the bounds of your time integral. If you want an exact match, if you want this radar to detect the exact frequency, then you're gonna have to integrate from minus infinity to positive infinity, and then you end up with this delta function, infinitely long lines, and that's exactly what the Fourier transform does um, in, its, in its theoretical form. So again, it's a little bit mathematically intense, uh, and I did skip a lot of steps, or I did simplify a lot of steps. I didn't go over all the tedious math or the integrals, but I just want you to understand the point of the math behind the Fourier transforms and how it's actually a quite simple idea. And once you're able to just take uh, any, any Fourier transform, multiply it by this guy, simplify it in a form, perform the integral, and see that depending on what bounds you have, um, the integral is just there to tell you how, how, how certain you are that that's the frequency you're actually looking for. So yeah, with that being said, I will see you in the next video. I will likely uh, make the next video on either the Fourier series or probably another topic. I don't know. We will see about that. Also, my channel just hit 100,000 subscribers. So thank you guys so much to the people who have uh, liked, uh, commented, subscribed. Uh, you guys are truly, truly awesome. My apologies. It's been over a month uh, for me to post a video. I have been extremely, extremely, extremely busy uh, with a lot of work that I'm doing at my postdoc um, at NASA and... Yeah, it's just a lot of cool projects coming in, but more more interesting videos should be should be coming your way. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace love.